Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danny, and I'm the creator of Practical Mommy Loves Luxury. I'm in the process of creating this series of videos for new or expecting parents. I had a relatively tough breastfeeding journey, but eventually after a lot of grit and determination, I was successful and I was able to breastfeed for a total of 11 months. So I thought in today's video, I would share products that I think would help an expecting mother prepare for breastfeeding and some of these products can help increase breast supply <laughs> and some of these products can help increase breast milk supply. I've divided these items into two categories. The first category being items that I think you should have before the baby arrives. The second category covers products that I think you should just be aware of and you can wait till the baby arrives before you decide whether you get them or not. This video does not cover techniques on how to increase your breast milk supply because that's a whole other video in itself. So without further ado, let's start with the first category, which is the five things I think that you should have before the baby arrives. The very first thing is a good breast pump. Yes, you're planning to breastfeed, but you will still need a breast pump. So it takes about five days after the baby is born for the breast milk supply to properly come. And in the meantime, you need the stimulation in order for the breast milk supply to build up. The thing is though, initially when the breast milk supply is low, and although you've got your baby latched on, initially the baby may not be particularly interested in latching, sucking or attaching for a long time because there's no breast milk. And this is when the breast pump comes in. Don't be like silly me who did not research anything about breast pumps before the baby arrived. In the first few days after my baby was born, I used the hospital breast pump and I researched which breast pump I was going to get. I decided on the Spectra S2 because it had really good reviews. I ordered it and between the time I got discharged and the time that my pump arrived, I used a manual pump. The good thing about that is I get to talk to you about three breast pumps. From my experience, I would not recommend the manual pump. It is very inefficient and it does not get out much breast milk whatsoever. With an electric pump, you tend to pump for 15 to 20 minutes, but with a manual pump, you might have to pump for twice as long. And if you're constantly having to manually squeeze that trigger, your hand can get quite sore and it can be really frustrating when hardly anything comes out. The other huge downside to a manual pump is that you can only pump one side at a time. So my first recommendation is don't get a manual pump. So the electric pump that I used in hospital was from Medela. That one also did not have a dual pumping option, so you can only pump one side at a time. Medela does make a pump that has a double pump option. However, um, I've not used this one before, so I can't really comment on it. So when I compare these two pumps that I used to the Spectra S2 that I owned, there were so many more features that I found helpful. So firstly, it is very quiet and it also has a nightlight, which means that if you need to pump really late in the night, you can do it next to someone who's sleeping, whether that be your, your baby or your husband. The other really great thing is that it does have a double pump option, which means that you cut your pumping time into half. It is also really efficient and it's got really good suction, which means you can get out a lot of that liquid gold. It also has a timer. It was really easy to check how long you had pumped for rather than constantly having to watch the clock. More recently, when I had a look at the Medela pumps, I couldn't find any of the Medela models that had a timer on it. The other thing that I think is really good about Spectra is when you order their products online, they get delivered within two business days in the metropolitan area. And that's really good just for your pump arriving. But sometimes there are parts or accessories that may break down and when you reorder them, it's nice to have them get to you again really quickly. The Spectra S2 currently retails for Australian $299. It is also quite easy to get the pump pre-loved. I know women who are comfortable reusing all the parts after sterilizing them, but if you're not comfortable with that, it's fine to buy the pump pre-loved and then to go to the official website to buy the parts that would have been in contact with the previous user's breast milk. So the parts that come in touch with breast milk would be the valve, the breast shields, bottles and teats. 
and these parts would set you back about 70 Australian dollars. So take that into account if you intend to buy the parts brand new and the pump pre-loved because you don't want to be buying a pre-loved pump and then paying $70 for the accessories only for that to come up more expensive than buying the entire set from the official website. So the second thing that I think you should have before the baby arrives is a breast shield holder. So in order to facilitate double pumping, hands-free, you can have a breast shield holder. In this situation, you can choose to use your phone if you want. That's much more entertaining than having to hold the breast shields on the breast. But I found this most helpful because it enabled my hands to be free so that I could do a breast massage to get as much milk out as possible. And that's literally just applying pressure on the breast from the chest towards the nipple in order to express as much milk as possible. And you can buy these commercial ones, but you can achieve the same thing just by using a couple of your old bras. They can be underwire bras, they can be sports bras, and you can cut some slits into them to fit the breast shields in. Now, the size of the slits do have to be custom to the size of your breast shield in order to get the best hold. And I will link a few YouTube videos down below to show you how to DIY them. It's really easy. I'm not particularly handy with the sewing machine or anything as such, but I was able to make them myself. Now, I would suggest that you make at least two. You will likely spill some breast milk on these breast shield holders. It'll be good to be able to put one in the laundry and to have a spare one to use as well. The other thing that I definitely recommend is a pack of multi mamps. So these are cool compressors to soothe nipple pain. Yes, breastfeeding is painful at the start, but I want to reassure you that the pain does subside after a few weeks. So the reason I recommend the multi mamps is because out of a lot of products on the market, these are the ones that I think are most effective. They also tend to be very expensive if you buy them at the hospital. It's most economical to buy it from discount chemists or an online website. Have a pack of these in your hospital bag and if you find that you need some more then you can go and ask your partner to go and get you some. The next thing that I really think you should have before the baby is born is one of these. So this is a Kmart maternity camisole. So these are padded on the other side just like a bra and it has these drop down clips that you can unclip and pull down in order to nurse the baby. And I'll show you how I managed. And now I've got it on. So I've got Polly here to help with the demonstration. So obviously I've put the camisole over my top for modesty. So this would in fact be a very similar setup when I want to breastfeed. I would be wearing a camisole. I would be wearing an outer layer which could be a cardigan like this or a robe or a pyjama top that could open up in front. So I will be holding my baby like this and I will be ready to breastfeed. I would undo the clip and then pull the cup down and attach the baby just like so. And as you can see in the setup, you are still mostly covered. Your arms and your shoulders are covered, your belly is covered, so that means that you at least stay really warm. I think the alternative when people have a top and a nursing bra underneath, you first have to take the top off and then you then unclip the nursing bra and then feed the baby. In that case, you'd just be wearing a bra. So I found this setup to be most practical. The next best thing about this camisole is that it retails for only $15 at Kmart. I owned seven of these and I wore these every day for 11 months when I was breastfeeding. Did I need seven? Honestly, I think I needed more. Throughout the day, the baby will vomit on you. There was one day where my daughter vomited on me four times and I had to essentially wear five of these in one day. When I had seven, I was still laundering my camisoles every two to three days. I think these camisoles are worth every single cent. And as you can see, I still have mine and I still use them as regular padded camisoles today. I think these are also really great to own during your pregnancy. As you grow during your pregnancy, chances are your skin might get quite itchy and quite sensitive and it's quite uncomfortable to wear a lot of bras that dig in. I think this is a very comfortable and practical alternative over a bra. The fifth thing that I think you should have before the baby is born is a snood. So I'm not just wearing this to hold my microphone today. There is a purpose for this being here. So as you can see, a snood is like a scarf. However, it is in one whole loop. So you don't have any ends dangling down, irritating the baby. So moving on now to the category of things that I think you should just be aware of and you can wait for the baby to be born before you decide whether you want to go ahead and purchase them. 
So the first thing are breast milk storage bags. So the one that I've got on screen is just one brand. There are many brands that make breast milk storage bags. So these bags are used for breast milk that you pump and you can subsequently store them in freezers. They come pre-sterilized and they should be BPA free. I did have a box of these, but I found that I never went through them for a couple of reasons. Firstly, my breast milk supply wasn't so high that I needed all these bags to store them. Secondly, I also found that I lost volume when I used these bags. So what I mean is when you pump your breast milk into the breast milk bottles, you subsequently empty it into these breast milk bags, you freeze it, the next time you want to use them, you thaw them and then you put them into a formula bottle. And I find that the volume that I initially pumped is not the volume that is in the formula bottle. So I came up with my own method and after I pumped the breast milk, I would pour it straight into the formula bottle and freeze it in that. So if you want, you can have a small supply of breast milk bags at home, but if you don't want to as well, you can wait to see what your breast milk supply is like before deciding to purchase these. And you can use formula bottles in the meantime, just like I did. So the next group of things that I think would be beneficial to be aware of are galactagogues. Galactagogues are natural products that increase breast milk supply. They would include things like Walida tea, fenugreek, sesame seeds, organic oats, organic quinoa, and brewer's yeast. So as I said before, I don't think you should have to go out and buy all these products before the baby arrives. I think it would be good to go and find out where you can buy these products. So usually they would be sold at specialized health food stores. So find your local health food store, head in and ask if they sell these products. And then if you realize that your breast milk supply is low and you want to use some of these products, yourself or your partner can head out to buy them. The other thing that I've also included in this category is lactation cookies. They are cookies that consist of galactagogues. There are tons of lactation cookie recipes on the internet. There are baked versions, there are unbaked versions, they come in different flavors. Lactation cookies are actually really delicious. The key ingredient in lactation cookies is brewer's yeast. Now adding brewer's yeast does not really change the taste of the cookies unless you add a whole ton. So I suggest that you look up some of these recipes. You can try them and save these recipes for the time when the baby arrives. And rest assured, before the baby arrives, if you have lactation cookies, they will not make you lactate. And they also will not make your husband lactate, so he can feel free to have some with you as well. You can also buy lactation cookies and there are lots of sellers online, but I think this can be quite expensive if you plan to do this over months. I also personally prefer the homemade option because it means that you can control how much sugar goes into it and exactly what ingredients go into it. So the very last thing I think you should just be aware of are nipple shields. Nipple shields. What are those, you ask me? <laughs> it sounds like your nipples are going to war, but as I've said earlier, breastfeeding can be very painful at the start and the nipple shields are there to provide some pain relief while the baby is breastfeeding. So they're like this sort of silicone Mexican hats that go over the nipple while you are breastfeeding. They are perforated so it allows the breast milk to flow through to your baby. The reason I'm bringing it up now is because every woman has different nipple sizes. So in order to get one that fits the best, you have to go and get measured up. So my hot tip is to go to a store like Baby Bunting, get measured up. You don't necessarily have to buy the shields straight away, but take note of your size. And when you start breastfeeding and you feel that you want to use these nipple shields, your partner can go and buy some for you. And that is all I have for you today. If you are aware of any other breastfeeding products that you think are worth mentioning, please leave a comment below. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please click on the thumbs up button below. If you haven't already subscribed, I would love for you to subscribe and also hit that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye bye!